P Arsenal means happy righty. <laughs> <laughs> what's going what's going on? Well, what's happened is, is that from the start of the season, when you look at the start of the season, when the, the, the defence, what they have now, none of them, was, you, you didn't have Tommy Asu. Ben White played, but he weren't quite right. No Gabriel, you know. Benjamin White. Benjamin, Benjamin White, yeah. Um, I think that Thomas Partey was missing. I remember the first game of the season, um, Lacazette and, and, and Aubameyang went down with an illness and it just, it just started pretty poorly, but he, he just didn't have a team in place. Um, to do what he wanted to do. And now you look at the, the players he has now, you know, Ramsdale is, is a phenomenon for, for Arsenal and what he's done. And I'm really pleased that it's turning out like it has for him because when we signed him for the 30 million, people were, were, were teasing us and saying, how can you sign a, a, mm. a goalkeeper that's gone down twice? But what, what, what I see is a goalkeeper that brings so much to the team, not just these brilliant goalkeeping at the moment, but his, his attitude and the fact that he is that chess beating getting that team going, because I think there's a lot of introverted players at Arsenal. And he's somebody that, you know I mean, he keeps Arsenal going. This was a fantastic game for Arsenal. You know, it kind of like got us going in the way that what, what, how we're trying to play, play out from the back. You see it now with, with, with Ben White, you're seeing what we're doing with Thomas Partey. We kind of seem to be moving on from a Granite Xhaka with, um, with Sambi Lokonga and the way we're playing. It seems to be a lot more solid with a 4-4-2. It seems to suit Saka a lot better as well. You know, and it just seems with Thomas Partey, um, with Thomas Partey and, and Sammy Lukonga in there, it just feels solid. You've got Lacazette, who's now playing in a number 10 instead of maybe Martin, Erd Martin Erdegaard, and he's doing well. So you've got that kind of dynamic where he's coming in done well as well. So, you know, there's a lot of things happening that weren't happening at the start of the season where they seem to be getting into the flow of it now. And because they're being so continuous with the same team, it seems like they're building something. No Europe. It yeah. must help. Well, I mean, whatever about what they've done in the few months since, I think Ateta deserves real credit because that situation could really have tailspun. Mm. I mean, the season started so badly. There was talk about kind of whether he had so many games until he yeah. was actually yeah. under pressure. And like, even if the, the board were always going to say strong, they must have at least been considering the kind of situation. Yeah. And it was such a bad start to the season, following on from how erratic a lot of last year was. Although, wasn't there a stat actually that since... Christmas last season, they've actually been one of the best performing sides in the Premier League. Mm. So, so you can see kind of a longer term effect. And, well, and this is, you're right, that sort of short run of yeah. poor games at the start of the season coloured people's perceptions as to how this season might have gone. Whereas maybe if you looked at the bigger picture, yeah, yeah. the signs were pointing towards what we've seen across the, yeah, the exactly. last eight games. And, and, and given that he is a young manager, and this is his first job, unlike Gerrard actually, um, there was no, I suppose, there was no guarantees there. So for him to kind of impose that yeah. personality and impose a structure on the team again is really impressive. I think that when he said, he came out with that statement, remember Miggy, where he said that was the best... I think it was after the City game, because that, oh, yeah. that was a game where you really started to worry. Yeah, yeah. Kells, when you watched it, you think to yourself, my gosh, these players... It wasn't even a... The, it, the, the performance was so poor that you start to question, are these players behind him? Mm. And I think after that game, when we lost 5-0, um, he, he had the break and he's, he came out with that statement about that has been the best 10 days of my yeah. football career. So something must have happened where he... And, and you've seen with the results after that, something's happened where those players came together and what we saw is that those players are fighting for him. Because since then, everything seems to have changed. And then you have to throw into that as well, Kells, that, that he's got all of his signings, what he's, he's made, is being involved in that. So even if there was something to do with a mutiny, the new players are probably were strong enough and playing mm. well enough once they did come in to kind of fight anything off. But what we are seeing is a team that are very much together. And it helps as well. That defensive improvement really helps. <laughs> it can't just be down to Aaron Ramsdale, although his numbers are fantastic. Yeah. The whole performance, the whole unit, as yeah. you were saying earlier, has to be right. Yeah, uh, you know, and I'm, I must admit, the first... Three games, you know, I was loving life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not so much now. <laughs> um, no, you're right. I think the whole team harder, you know, from the front. You're looking at Bamiang and yeah. Lacazette. They, they seem to be pressing a lot with a lot more intensity, which helps, which helps the whole team really. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, going back to Arteta, you know, he's, he's, he's he had a tough time after the Man City game. He looked almost finished. You know, you, <coughs> you could see on his face he looked lost, but. You know, somewhere along the line, he's he, he's got them galvanated, galvanated again, and or galvanised again, and uh, you know. But it started with two one one nil victories after that. So again, it goes back to the defence and making yeah. sure that you're tough and solid and hard to beat again. 
they got two nil, two one nil victories. Started to build a bit of confidence, and uh, you know we've seen them take that on. So but what what, but, what you see as well, Leds, is is um, with the goalkeeper, what the goalie gives us. We can we can bypass people, especially with Lacazette playing. You can bypass people if there if there is a press, and even if there is a press, you're seeing now. Someone like Ben White, who again we were ridiculed for paying the money for him, but that's the yeah. that's the player that uh, like, that Arteta wanted because not only can Ben White pass the ball into those areas, but now we're seeing he'll run the ball through those areas as well. So you can break lines with a centre half that's confident enough to do that. People like Thomas Partey will break lines with what he's doing. So when you've got a goalkeeper who can do that, then you get the ball into an area where we are now able to turn, because Lacazette will then link the play, and then you can start getting Saka away, getting Emil Smith-Rowe away, and Aubameyang. Actually, given Ramsdale's effect, it should be noted as well, that that was a signing that Arteta really pushed for. Mm. And it would have been easy to let that slide, given they had Leno there. Yeah. Leno had been a signing that had been kind of a symbol of the new structure from two years ago, post-Wenger. Yeah. But Arteta really pushed for Ramsdale, because he, he saw how important he could be for what the team wants I to do. I think that they, were, they, were, they must be even more surprised with what he brings to that dressing room. I'm telling you, you could see it when when he when he's playing. When anybody's in and you around. You see him singing along with the crowd chant. Yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant. And what you do see is how the players just continually come round him, and he, he's a he's a rallier, and it's a it's something that Arsenal have needed because people constantly talk about Arsenal when it weren't going well. Is no leaders, no characters in the dressing room. They are very introvert, introverted kind of group of players, and he seems to be bringing out the best in those players. You know, I'd, I'd love the fact that, like, even with Benjamin White, when he's come out and he says, listen, I don't watch much football, I just play football. I love the fact that he's, he's brave enough and strong enough to come out and admit that because he can deal with what comes with that. But when you look at his performances next to Gabriel, it's very solid with the goalkeeper. It's, it's a very good team. of Them three are very solid. And they're, they're footballing centre-halves into Thomas Partey, into Sambi Lukonga. You know, and now Arsenal are looking like the structure and the way the team's playing. You could see if it has to go long, they'll, they'll do that. But, like, if a defender has to get him, run it out of play, run it into the midfield and then go from there. We saw Ben White setting up um, Emma Smith Rose goal the other day. Yeah. So we're looking at a team now that seems a lot of confidence. The worry, Kells, is there is no Europe and there's players that probably won't play as regularly as they would want mm -hmm. to because there's no football matches to put them in. That might be a worry, but as time goes by, hopefully everybody will come together and when they get their chance, like Maitland-Niles, they'll take yeah. it. Yeah. The, the one counterpoint, I suppose, is, because I, and I, I do generally obviously feel I, we're starting to see the, the positive effects of Arteta, but one thing you'd see, I suppose, is maybe this has been a forgiving run and there's maybe a little bit of fragility about it, that if they play the kind of wrong team now at the, at, at, at the wrong time, mm. it could come crashing down yeah. again. Liverpool, we saw, yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool's yeah. next week. We, 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 we saw with Brighton, like I mentioned, Brighton, they're so organised, they're so well coached by Graham Potter. And we saw what that done with Arsenal. What else we see with Arsenal is that they're starting games very quickly. Okay, yeah. And um, when they score in that time, yes, they're fine. But then there's a period in the game, what we saw in that Leicester game with, um, with Aaron Ramsdale saving, saving Arsenal, is that Arsenal kind of like, they feel like they're retreating. And the goalkeeper kind of kept us in that game. Then we moved, moved again and kicked on again. But that's the worry, is how we manage the game if we don't score early, and when you're coming up against a, a Liverpool, and like we did with Brighton, Brighton were so good that those are the, the, the problems that he has to solve now. And with the Liverpool camp game coming up, it's a, perfect, it's a perfect barometer to see exactly where they are. Given how much has been reported by <laughs> Arsenal's young players about Arteta's new signings, how interesting was it to hear Aubameyang talking about the conversation that he had with Arteta about the captaincy? I think it was interesting because Arteta's obviously recognised something in the way he's playing or maybe the way his demeanour around the training ground to actually ask him, if, are you OK with the captaincy? Is it something, is it weighing too heavy on you? And what was really good to hear is that he said no. He wanted, he wanted a responsibility because... I think that what's, what's happening there is that Arteta seems to me, like you're just saying there, Kels, in the, while it was on there, is that he seems to have won him over. Hmm. I don't think he ever lost him. I just think that what was happening with Aubameyang, especially in the times when we didn't have the players that I mentioned earlier, was making the team get up the pitch quicker. He had to do a lot more hmm. running in, dire in the direction. You, do you don't want to see him running in because we're talking about one of our oldest players. I think the other day it was... Him and Lacazette, and the, the next oldest player was 24, Maitland Niles. So you don't want your oldest, most experienced, and your best goal scorer tracking that way. So I think that that was happening for quite a bit, and he was he wasn't happy with it. 
You could see he weren't happy mm. with it. But now he's got so much creativity behind him. You're seeing him making the runs that we know he's famous for because we can get the ball in there to him now. And I think that that's what the manager maybe had to have the words yeah. with him to talk about, Kells, and just say to him, listen, I'll get it back. I'll get it right for you. Um, but are you, are you ready to still lead if this can happen? And he said, yeah, and it's really good to see. Just on that as well, I mean, in terms of kind of the creativity, there was a point last season, and maybe at the start of this season, when it, when it wasn't going so well for Arteta, and I think one of the biggest criticisms would have been basically that it looked like everything they tried to do in attack was too prescribed, like it was yeah. too structured. Yes. Whereas now you're actually seeing the kind of, you know... A little bit more chaos, man, a little yeah, bit more yeah, just yeah. off the cuff. Free, free, yeah, which obviously yeah. suits kind of the way Aubameyang played yeah. as well. And it suits the way Saka plays, it suits yeah. the way Emin Smith Rowe plays. Yeah. You need to get those players to be able to say, like, hopefully Pepe is somebody that can maybe thrive if he gets the opportunity. Because, like I said, there's going to be players now who are not going to play as often as they maybe would like to. But you'd like to see someone like Pepe come in. Yeah. People are saying, yes, 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 and he's having a shot and then apologising. <laughs> it's something that I kind of mentioned to him. I said, listen, you create as well. Mm. So there's times when you get into these situations, have a shot, get more shots in games. And like now he's doing it and he's, he's, he's scoring goals and we so, need so goals this, from so other revenues. Did this. But pro probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> somewhere along the line, Kels, because remember, I went to school with his brother, so yeah. even just him touching me when he was a kid yeah. made Emma yeah. Smith Rowe exactly. come out and be what he is. No, in all seriousness, it's something that he was really, really worried about. I want to score more goals. And he was getting into positions, but he was missing. I said, just keep getting in there. And it's, it's just happening now. Well, he scored more goals already this season yeah. than he did last season. Yeah, it, he's it shows. upped everything. He must, been, he must have been working on, yeah. on his finishing. He's upped everything. He's upped everything. Yeah. More shots in games, getting himself in the box more. Yeah. And that is where you'll score more goals. Yeah, he's, he's just been a fantastic player to watch and to watch the development of him as well. Yeah, he is, you know, and he's, he's, he plays with a maturity. Mm. You know, he, you know, I'm not sure how old he, how old is he? No. He's, 20, he's 21 now. 21, but, mm. you know, he seems so much older, you know, mm. the way he plays the game. Um, but, yeah, tremendous, tremendous player. And, yeah. and as Wright said, you know, scoring goals is the, is the next part of his game to take him to the next level. You know, if he wants to be one of the, the, the best players in that position, mm. got to score goals. Mm. Got to Again, score. that's a remarkable thing that you say. I mean, you'd almost forget he's 21 mm. because the way he's taken on the responsibility on the, himself and Saka. And the thing is, mm. is he, he himself said, I want a number 10. Yeah. You see, now yeah, people, yeah. I remember when, when uh, Dennis Burkamp came, Paul Merson handed him the number 10. He said, yeah, you can have it because it means so much. And for him to take it off of the fact that a legend like Dennis Burkamp had it, it yeah, that, that's, yeah. again, coming through the academy, that's the confidence and the drive and the determination he has because he's taken the responsibility of that shirt. People say, well, it's only a shirt, it's only a number. No, if you've got that shirt and you are not performing, mm. That, that weighs heavy on mm. you, but he was willing to take that responsibility. And now we're seeing him thrive with that. He's thriving. I think it's really interesting when you talk about the, the confidence that, that he has, because when he's interviewed, he is very clearly a 21-year-old yeah. kid. <laughs> yeah. like, there's, a, yeah. there's a real difference between how he looks when he's on a pitch and how he looks outside of that situation. It's, it's, yeah, but Kells, it's like you, you see players, like um, they change when they get onto the pitch. Um, in, in the way they demean it's because he's very shy, but then the, the, the person, the real person, that, that, the, 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 the talent comes out and it's on the pitch where he's like, he's not afraid he of it. He feels anyone. at home, don't he? Yeah, you that's know? where you feel yeah. at home. That's where you feel like, this is where I can express myself. Because obviously when you speak to him, when you see him, he's so shy, so, so shy. But when he gets, when he gets on the pitch, that's where, the, that's where Emmy Smith Rowe comes to life because that's where he's, he's at his best. That's where he feels he's most confident. You picked up on that point. Is that how you felt that when you went out onto the pitch, that was, that was you at home? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And a lot of players are like that. You know, we like to, our feet to do the talking for us, you know, rather than the, the talking ourselves. But, you know, as I say, I think for, for him, he's a, he's a natural player. Mm. You know, so I think about someone like a Gascoigne, you just, yeah. you just throw a ball at them and, yeah. and let them go and they just yeah. play. You know, and, and that's why he's done so well, being a young kid, not feeling the pressure of wearing a number 10. It's because he's a natural player who just wants mm. to play. Yeah. And when he plays, that's when he's at his best. Mm -hmm. Got himself a chef in as uh, well, well, hasn't he? Yeah, but these are the things I think that... And, and it feeds down from someone like Cristiano literally Ronaldo. Literally feeds down. Yes, literally. <laughs> because what, what these young guys are seeing is that the guys at the very top, 
what they're doing is that they're investing in themselves, in what they bring around themselves, whether it's the chef, the PT, the, the house, the stuff in the house, the, the, um, the pools, everything what they can afford to make themselves better, last longer. They're doing that, and you have to say, this is the and thing... And they're what... doing it from earlier. Yeah. This was something that players would do <laughs> yeah. towards the end of their career to yeah. try and prolong it, try but to they, prolong it. they but start there. When you've got them now doing... They, they, they finish the game, they, they do the high ice baths, and they do the ice baths on a Sunday. They relax, they, they relax more. They, they're doing all the things that is gearing them to be the, the best that they can be once they get, on the, get there on a Saturday. And it's what Wenger... When Wenger came... Yeah. It was the early days of it. It's every single thing you're doing for your body is for you to perform at your very best on the Saturday. And I think that that's now fed into the players and players are doing it. They're doing it now. Just on that, actually, I interviewed uh, Christoph Adger from Brentford uh, mm. two weeks ago and he said that exactly. He said, football, being a footballer now, a 24-7 job because it's training games, but also on top of that, it's all of the work you have to do around that. And even right, not just nutrition and looking after yourself, but also the actual research in terms of like tactical, which you can imagine are Ted as well on top of as well, given but, how structured they are. But the thing is, is that I remember when, when Wenger came and we had to do all the stuff we was doing with the nutrition and all this, the vitamins. Chew to win. Yeah, all that sort of <laughs> stuff. I remember because I shared, shared rooms with Dennis and like, um, you know, I said, oh, I can't wait till we, till we get back home so I can eat some, some food, some nice. And he said, what do you mean? I said, yeah, I just eat what my normal, other stuff, the normal stuff. He says, I eat this all the time. I do this all the time. He says, like, what we have for breakfast when we're, when we're with Wenger, what we have for lunch, what we have for dinner, I do that at home as well. <laughs> I was like that. I was like, do you? I said, yes. And he was deadly serious. Did so you cry? I was, I was devastated because I hated the food because it was so bland. But then when I went home, I started to make... I started to have to do the same things because I get it now. Mm, if you're yeah. going to do it, you have to... It's 24 hours, like you're saying. What, what, what was the worst thing you actually had to give up when Wenger came in? Well, well we had to... <laughs> anything to do with sugar was right. gone. Wow. Anything. Tea. We couldn't have tea. You know, tea is something that you just have. It's just... Yeah. It's yeah. just you just have it. Any sugar, no chocolate, no nothing. There was no well, even sweet tea stuff. without sugar. No in tea. It. You, you, you well. can only have water yeah. with Wenger, yeah. especially when we're in the in the match situation. And we had to walk with water all the time. He said, "You don't drink water when you're first. You drink water continually, and it's something that you you kind of get used to." But it was he was right. He was right, and and, and it was it was tough for the first for the first few months for people. But then you saw the, the run with Arsenal went on to win in '98. Mm. You know, ten games unbeaten. We were literally like we like robots. It was like we were so strong. Mm. And it's all down to eating bland food. Eating bland food. <laughs> eating bland food. The way forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. No there season. There a, a black man with no, a black man with a food with no seasoning. <laughs> it was like, what is going on here? I'd Winning has the flavour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> and we're going to leave it on that one. That's a great line to leave it on. Winning adds the flavour.